Alright guys, uh, I want to do an upside down fire on the snow today. So I processed some wood, I got my little spot there, basically the snow's all packed up. And I got all my wood here, as well as a little bit of fat wood. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to stack our fire with the large pieces on the bottom. Okay, so basically just grab some pieces. Alright, line them up a little bit, just like so. And then do a crisscross pattern. So you're creating lots of air in between. All right, back on top and so forth to build up our little pile here. All right, it's all getting burned. Doesn't have to be pretty. As long as we got lots of air space in between because we know fire likes air, right? So once we stack all this up, we're gonna put some of our smaller stuff uh, on top. I actually made a little uh, bird's nest. All right, out of some uh, jute twine. All right, this stuff. Basically pull it apart, all the strands. And keep pulling the strands apart and apart and apart, right? And then you get this these fibers, all right? So here's our little bird's nest. And we're gonna fluff this up a little bit, put this on top. All right, for fire. Actually hold that down, a little piece of fat wood, which will catch very nicely. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some um, char cloth and we're gonna try to get a spark off of this straight knife. All right, this is a 1095 carbon, but what we have to do is we have to rough up the top here because there's a coating on it, all right? Once you remove that coating, that steel should uh, offer us a nice little spark with a piece of flint, which I have right here. A little piece of English flint. I just worked this back and forth, back and forth, and I removed a lot of that coating. It is a really tough coating, which is very nice with blade because you don't want it to rust. However, if you're going to be using this in this particular scenario, you might want to remove some of that coating on the back here uh, prior to going out in the woods or whatever you go do with your knife. So, we take our piece of flint. All right, we use one of these sharp angles here. And if we do this right, we should be getting some sparks. Now, you guys, I don't know if you guys can see that but it's definitely throwing sparks. Hopefully you guys can catch that. The tricky part <laughs> is catching it on our piece of char cloth here. So what I want to do is kind of hold this, because I want to stay away from the sharp edge too. This is a, a tricky procedure. So I want to kind of hold it there on the spine. You can see I'm holding, gripping the knife here on the handle. All right, and I'm hoping that when I throw it this way, it's going to land on the side there. We can use that to get this started. All right. As well as not slicing my finger and trying to hit this. So definitely tricky. And it is very cold out here and it's very windy. What? Saw a piece go flying. All right. Put this down here for a second. I'm going to kind of fold this over. It's not easy stuff, you know. You can see something on a video or a show. You're like, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, we'll get out and try it. Stuff's not easy usually. All right, so same deal. Try to hold it there. Nice sharp edge. Well, not too sharp. I don't want to slice my finger open. See, it's flopping over on me. Me, me. Uh, I guess we're going to try to do this the safe way. There's definitely sparks flying. Not in the right area.
Oh shit, here we go. Uh-oh. Come on. Hot damn, hot damn. Come on. Some of this fat wood to catch. I'm telling you, man, fat wood is like miracle wood. I mean, regular wood, obviously, this thin piece like this, this might catch, you know, but that once that fat wood's lit, forget about it. It's like guaranteed. All right, so realistically, let's see here. To get the camera out of the way. It's gonna start getting pretty hot here. Um, but realistically, what you want to do for an upside down fire is put a lot more of your smaller stuff on top, a lot of twigs and stuff, because most of you are probably not gonna have fat wood. I mean, it'd be great if you did. You should definitely pack some fat wood away. Um, but it's it's only. Honestly, I think it's only lit because I had the fat wood. I didn't really prep the fire how I should have. It should have been a lot more twigs and stuff, but it's winter. There's snow everywhere, so I got to walk through three and a half, four feet of snow just to go get some twigs. Um, you know, obviously, if you're like dependent on it, you sure would. But right now, my life doesn't depend on it. I'm just playing around having some fun. But basically, that's what you do. And you're building it upside down. You're putting all your big stuff on the bottom, little stuff on the top, your tinder bundle, all your twigs and stuff. Once you get it lit, all that heat is going to run downward. And it should be pretty sustainable. Let's back this up even more. And watch this thing go for a little bit. So, yeah. The, uh, the old flint and steel. Where? Oh, man, I just threw it. I got so damn excited. I just dropped it. So there you go. And I have more wood to feed it if I needed to. But uh, even the snow, this should burn for a while. Now obviously you could keep feeding this fire. What's nice about an upside down fire, if you build it properly, not like this, this is kind of thrown together, but uh, build properly, it will last a while. You don't have to keep feeding it. That's the whole purpose of it. Um, but especially on the snow, you really kind of want to make a a barrier of wood or bark or something so that the uh, the snow isn't pulling all that heat out of there and especially when it gets to the bottom it's not going to just you know go out on you all right guys so another five minutes down the road wind picked up a little bit and uh, so did the fire pretty sustainable if you prepare for it and you have enough uh, wood and stuff ready to go so there you go even in the snow you can certainly build a fire thanks for watching guys hope you have a great day i'll see you soon take care